This is Twit. Is there something wrong with WPA2? Oh, yeah. There is a, there is a known uh, password attack known as the crack attack. If, if somebody sniffs your, your authenticating to a, um, an access point, they can then perform an offline brute force attack. So the, consequently, the strength of your password to the access point is important. Mm. And, and so in, in various settings where, it's, where maybe the password is sort of predictable or guessable, you know, like it's the, the car dealership or, the, you know, the, or a, a, a company that may have their name or address or something in the password, there is some vulnerability. So, so there is, there is a, a known problem with, with WPA2, but, there's a, but the good news is WPA3 fixes not only that, but offers some new features, which we've been wanting, the, <laughs> everybody's been wanting for a long time. So it's been 15 years since WPA2 arrived back in 2004. So it's been, uh, that's been around a while. Um, and you, uh, you might say that's 14 years since it's 2018, except that we're not actually going to get WPA3 till late next year. So, okay, it will be 15 years by the time we actually get WPA3. Um, it's unclear whether, uh, just because of the uh, Wi-Fi alliance, whether and, and their stickers and their certification programs, whether existing hardware will be upgradable. We have to imagine that our, that our smartphones and, you know, like you know, Apple and Android and widely deployed devices will be upgradable. Uh, this probably requires the baseband processor to be upgraded, which I assume can be done uh, over, o over the air by the phone provider. Um, but it's not clear whether we're all going to have to get Wi-Fi, new Wi-Fi routers if we want to use this, or whether a firmware update would be able to bring these features to us. Again, it's, it's, this is all licensing-based and certification-based, and you know the Wi-Fi alliance is the Wi-Fi alliance. Um, and as I said, I got excited this morning by the idea that they had published the specs and it turns out it was just an absolute tease. So I was like, oh, okay, fine. Um, so it is, of course, backward compatible so that, so that any device that isn't WPA3 will be able to fall back to WPA2 functionality. Um, there are two flavors. There is WPA3 Personal and WPA3 Enterprise. Uh, the personal brings better protections to, uh, to individuals uh, by, as I mentioned, uh, and as you, uh, as you prompted me for, Leo, uh, providing more robust password-based authentication. Um, it's known that there is a weak uh, password authentication problem WPA3 uses something known as SAE, Simultaneous Authentication of Equals, which replaces the longstanding PSK that we've talked about and pounded on for years, the pre-shared key approach, which was built into WPA2. So this, this, this SAE, the Simultaneous Authentication of Equals technology, is resistant to offline dictionary attacks, which the crack attack makes possible under WPA2. Uh, so that so that you know strengthens Wi-Fi. And again, I, I don't have to tell everybody that you know the world has just become Wi-Fi. I mean, more but just it's it's incredible to me. Once upon a time, it was you know, do you have Wi-Fi? You know, now it's like, well, do you do you have a cell phone? It's like they just they don't ask you. They say, what's your mobile number? So it's like, yes, what's you know, what's your Wi-Fi? So it's just ubiquitous, obviously. 
So it was the crack attack, K-R-A-C-K, which stood, stood for key reinstallation attack. And at the time, we covered it on the podcast extensively. So if anyone is interested in a, in a refresher, you can find the, the podcast, Crack, K-R-A-C-K, which is an attack on WPA2 authentication, which allowed someone sniffing the, the, the transaction to grab it. And remember also that it was possible to de-authenticate anyone by sending a de-authenticate packet to the, the, the um, access point, which would force a re-authentication, allowing attacker to capture the authentication traffic if they, if they showed up too late otherwise, and, and then launch the offline attack. So a, a determined attacker who is either passive and patient or active uh, would be able to, given the complexity of the password, and, you know, Wi-Fi passwords are prob they probably suffer from a lack of sufficient complexity just because people don't think that's important enough. Uh, that could be a problem. So the Wi-Fi Alliance brags that this WPA3 allows users to choose passwords that are easier to remember um, because a traffic analysis attack, which WPA2 does suffer, suffer from, would not function, would not succeed under WPA3. Um, uh, oh, and WPA3 also gives us perfect forward secrecy. So we know what that means. That means that traffic captured now cannot be later decrypted if in the future the key is determined. So perfect forward secrecy is a, another good feature of encryption, which arguably all modern crypto should have. And when we have WPA3, we'll have it in our Wi-Fi for the first time. We don't have that now. Uh, we have that in in the higher level links in in TLS. So it's good to have it there, but not at the Wi-Fi link. There's also a an enterprise version of WPA3, as there is sort of nominally for WPA2, um, which, uh, which increases the encryption key strength. And it's not clear to me why they just don't have that in WPA3 personal, but I guess they want to have a higher class grade uh, in, in, in their scant coverage of this, they said that WPA3 Enterprise offers an optional mode using 192-bit minimum strength security protocols uh, to better protect sensitive data. Uh, and it uses, you know, just larger uh, uh, communications protocols. Presumably, it requires a little more oomph at each of the endpoints and so it may not be something that a, a, a weak IoT device wants to or needs to deploy. And, and again, it's not clear to me that, uh, that, there's a, that there's a compelling need. But, of course, the, the enterprise WPA offers, uh, you know, Kerberos uh, key negotiation and, and lots more uh, uh, fancy features that the typical end user just doesn't need. However... In terms of good features, we've got a couple things. Uh, number top of the list, I think. Well, there's two. Uh, we now encrypt opportunistically open Wi-Fi networks, which is like yay. Why? why it's, it's why has this taken this long? Um, we've often talked about it. I've lamented its lack because it is so easy to do. I was talking about it just a couple of weeks ago, how in a world where we have uh, Diffie-Hellman encryption, uh, even though you don't have authentication, you, which means you're still susceptible to a man in the middle, uh, with Diffie-Hellman key exchange, that's what I meant to say, sorry, Diffie-Hellman key exchange, in plain sight, endpoints can exchange can establish a secret 
that no passive observer can determine. So like for a long time, there's been no need for unencrypted Wi-Fi. You could have uh, you could have Wi-Fi that where you walk into any you know coffee shop or car dealership waiting for your car or airport, and it's like free Wi-Fi, which is also per connection encrypted. But we haven't had that because the Wi-Fi Alliance didn't give it to us until now and until next year, late next year. Um, so there is something known as OWE, Opportunistic Wireless Encryption, which is defined by the IETF. It's, a, it's an IETF defined RFC 8110, which the Wi-Fi Alliance has adopted and will be part of WPA3. So unfortunately, it will require the retirement or the upgrading of, of each end point for us to have this, but it does mean that in the absence of an active man in the middle attack, because that's because remember that that the Diffie Hellman key exchange doesn't authenticate, it allows as long as you know who you're talking to, thus the authentication component, it allows a a visible exchange of data to establish a secret between two parties. But if somebody gets in in the middle and pretends to be the other person to each end, then then that person ends up establishing secrets with each end and is able to decrypt the traffic moving through. But still, much better than nothing. And the last new feature of WPA3 is they call Wi-Fi Easy Connect, which which they're not describing and I hoped to get it, but it was one of those, I got, you know, the seven page teaser with ac acronyms defined. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, they did say that it uses visible QR codes printed on access points and IOT devices and that it uses public key crypto. So we can pretty much, reverse engineer what it is from that. What that will mean is that there, that a router will have a factory set asymmetric private key burned into its firmware with the public key shown as a QR code on its exterior label. And the same will be true of an IOT device. It'll come with a per device private key and printed on it will be a little QR code, which is the matching public key. And as we know, uh, that just that allows us to solve this problem. It allows a device with a camera to obtain the public key, which for which the matching private key is only known to the device on which that public key is printed. The public key would allow the device seeing the QR code to generate a random number to, we'll call that the ephemeral key, encrypt that under the public key, which can then only be decrypted by the device's secret private key. So it allows the the secure establishment of a temporary link because, because it doesn't matter if somebody, even in this case, is an, a man in the middle. A man in the middle attacker can't change anything or ha has no way of, of decrypting it. Essentially, you can think of the, the QR codes as optical channel um, out of band information exchange. It, it's it's out of band in that it's it's just sitting there as a label, and if you if you don't have you know optical access to it, then uh, you have no way of knowing what the device's public key is. So th they don't explain how this works in detail. 
they they talk about a device like a smartphone uh, being used for a device that has a limited user interface. So a router has a very limited UI and you know a light bulb or an IoT device, a burglar alarm a switch on the door or something, very limited um, UI. So the idea would be you just you, you scan the QR code with your phone it then participates in this interchange in order to to get the devices set up in a way that is now and you know people have been doing uh, setting up IOT devices using a, a, a temporary hotspot in a smartphone for a while. The problem is it is vulnerable to a, to an attacker watching that who is present watching that process occur there so there's a window of vulnerability. That's what this eliminates. And it also means that just moving forward, anytime you want to associate uh, in a you want to establish a, a secure association, if you can if there's an optical channel uh, that allows that to happen, it can be done with with you no know, true security. So they're calling it easy connect. It's a uh, you know, we know from having discussed uh, WPS, that was the previous, uh, easy way of connecting that ended up being horribly flawed because it turns out it was a an eight digit code that could be chopped into a four digit and a three digit because the last digit was calculable it was just a check digit uh, and it allowed the whole thing to be brute forced uh, very easily. So we're gonna hope that the Wi-Fi Alliance uh, has not made any similar mistakes. Uh, in any event, we're getting uh, a bunch of welcome features. Uh, we'll have to wait another year and a half, um, and then it will require that hardware be changed and updated. But as that happens over time, I mean, uh, g given that we were with this last WPA2 spec for for 15 years, uh, there'll certainly be time for us to be obsoleting and replacing devices with WPA3. And so we just get more security. And again, as with the case with LTE, we would like these radio links to be secure, but to the degree that they are simply the carriers of the lower layer traffic of, of sessions, which are themselves much more secure and authenticated, we could argue that to, you know, so long as what they are carrying is is providing its for its own security, then the worst that can be done is a denial of service attack, or you know things break for some reason, but there's no you know active vulnerability or or l lack of privacy or information uh, disclosure. So anyway, that's WPA three. Uh, I'm sure we'll know much more about it. I hope we know more about it as we get much closer. It'll be about a year and a half from now. So I'm sure we could calculate which episode of Security <laughs> Note now that will be. And it, it uh, comes in conjunction with 802.11ax, right? It doesn't require it, but I know that that's part of the improved spec for AX. Yeah. Which also is a year and a half out. 